So I heard there's this game coming up on Monday night between the Ravens and the Raiders. Oh, and it actually counts. Week one of the season starts now. Let's go. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Well, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. The YouTube team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraving here with another video. And we finally done made it, y'all. We finally made it to week one officially. And we are here to talk about the game that we got coming up between the Ravens and the Raiders. Shout out to any Ravens fans coming through. Y'all already know what time it is. And any Raiders fans that may be new here, appreciate y'all coming through too. Uh, this is for everybody where you can share your thoughts on how you think the game is going to go. No matter what team you're a fan of, it's all love here, baby. Talk your trash, but hey, keep it respectful at the same time. But just have fun with it. Anyway, this game, this should be a really, really good one. A really good one. Um, just to s jump straight into it with Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. I do think with Lamar, you know he hears everything. He's been hearing everything that everybody's been saying, especially this offseason, because it's feel like it's gotten significantly worse. But I do think that Lamar in this game, that he will throw for at least four touchdowns and r r run for one, but I'm thinking two. And I know a lot of people may think, man, Engraven, what are you talking about? Are you crazy? What's going on in your mind, man? You're being such a homer. It's not even that. It's that with Lamar Jackson, it's like a gift and a curse. Because you know he hears all the outside noise. You know he hears what everybody been saying about him. And, and again, people have continued to run with this narrative. He can't pass. He can't throw the ball. And you know one of the craziest things about it is that people... Well, analysts, experts, all that media and stuff, they will compare these different quarterbacks to Lamar Jackson. Like, that's, oh, this quarterback, he's going to be better than Lamar Jackson. Oh, this quarterback, he can pass better than Lamar Jackson. They'll use him as an example, but then at the same time, they'll turn around and be like, oh, he can't throw. He can't throw. So why, if he really can't throw, why would you use him as an example to say this quarterback is going to be better than him? This quarterback can pass. It just doesn't make any sense. But, you know, narratives got to be pushed. But anyway, I do think that Lamar is it's just a, another revenge tour, man. And I think that he will really uh, be trying to use all his new toys. And I know that, yes, Rashad Bateman is not going to be out there. Uh, Boykin isn't going to be out there as well. But with Hollywood, Sammy Watkins, DuVernay, Proche, Tylen Wallace, Mark Andrews, Josh Oliver, I think that they'll hold it down just fine. And, of course, can't even forget about the running backs with Gus Edwards, Tyson Williams, and Justice Hill if he plays. I do think if Justice Hill plays, uh, then he'll definitely be involved in the passing game. Um, but this game, I just feel like Lamar is going to be trying to throw that ball all over the field uh, and just really try to carve up this Raiders defense. And what, one thing that I want the Ravens to do, just come out strong. And it's crazy to say this as a Ravens fan, but what I actually want and expect to happen is that the pass set up the run. I want this game, the pass, to set up the run. And yeah, that sounds wild, especially because you know Ravens, they really, really run that ball like nobody's business, man. But I think in this game, they sort of flip it a little bit. They flip it a little bit just to try to show off what they've been working on, just to try to show off everything that they've been implementing into this offense, especially the passing offense. But now I do think they're still going to get their run on too, but... I think that pass, and in this game, the pass uh, sets up the run. Um, now, with the run, Gus Edwards. A lot of people don't know who Gus Edwards is. A lot of people are not really familiar with Gus Edwards. Get familiar with him. Get familiar with him. I think that Gus Edwards in this game, I think he runs for about 80 yards. Um, he get one touchdown, maybe two, but I'm thinking 80 yards, at least in, in one touchdown. I don't think he's going to go off like crazy, but I still think he's going to do his thing. And then contribute in the passing game uh, as well. Tyson Williams, I think he'll contribute. And like I said earlier, I think if, if Justice Hill does play, um, I, I think that he'll be a part of the passing game. Uh, he can catch some little wheel routes and whatnot, catch some screens. Uh, now, offensive line, something that has been a big concern for us Ravens fans. And it still is a concern. Um, but hopefully they sort of ease our troubles a little bit. I think in, in early on, this, they may start off a little bit slow, may allow a little bit of pressure here and there. Um, but I think as the game gets going, 
And especially if Ravens can get control of the game and get control of the, of the clock, which I think that they'll do, uh, that'll make it easier. And it should make it easier for the offensive line uh, as well. So they can start just really running up that score, running up them points, uh, and then just running that ball, just closing it out. I do think early on, I think it'll be a little close early on, but I think maybe about the second quarter, that's when Ravens just take off. I think it, it'll go back and forth for a tiny bit. For a tiny bit, and then Ravens just, they do their thing. They really get it clicking, especially on defense, uh, and then they just, they hold it down. Now, um, speaking of defense, Adafe away. I, I think early on in the game that he will be used on first and second down a lot. I think we'll see that 99 out there on first and second down a lot. Um, then I think for a good amount of times that Justin Houston will come out and spell him. Uh, Justin Houston will come out and, and relieve him um, and, and be that pass rusher on those third and longs, on those passing downs uh, for the Raiders. Um, now, I do think they'll, they'll have him out there sometimes, too. Uh, but Dalen Hayes, Dalen Hayes is another one that I will watch out for to sort of have a, a, a sneaky impact game. Because, of course, Tyus Bowser is a starter. We know that. Um, and him and Dalen Hayes, they play the same position. But I, I do think that you'll see that number 59 out there, too. Now, um, the Ravens defense has a tough task uh, going up against Josh Jacobs. Now, he is a very physical, physical, physical runner. So y'all better have him tackling drills on point this week because you, you are going to need them for sure. And then they got King and Drake, uh, who's a speedy guy. So they got the best of both worlds. They got a nice little one-two punch there. And they, it's two guys that have been starters. Kenyon Drake's been a starter in this league before with the, uh, with the Cardinals, I believe. And with the Dolphins for a little bit, too. Uh, but anyway, they got a tough task. So Ravens, their first priority on defense is what has always been a priority on defense. Stop the run. You got to stop the run. And when you do that, and we've all heard it so many times before, you make the opposing team one-dimensional. You want the Raiders to be one-dimensional. Now, <laughs> with Ruggs, you know he got that crazy speed. Do not let him beat you over the top. Now, the safety play is something that I expect to still continue because it was good last year. Like, I mean, the safety play, well, they wasn't creating a bunch of turnovers or anything like that. But one thing that I appreciated about them last year is that just really the entire secondary, they didn't give up too many downfield plays. They did not give up too many deep balls and too many of that. And that was a good thing. And I hope that that continues uh, this year. So the, the cornerbacks, the secondary, they're just going to have to be on point, be on high alert. Uh, watch out for all the quick stuff because, you know, Derek Carr, he's going to try it all. He, he's going to try it all. Um, and something else, too, with Derek Carr, he, he got some sneaky speed. He's not no blazing fast quarterback anything, but he can take off if need be. That's something that the Ravens are definitely going to have to keep an eye on. Not that you necessarily have to play contained because he, he ain't going to be taking off all game or anything like that, but it's just something to watch out for. Um, now, uh, one of the defense's best friends against a quarterback, especially a quarterback who has uh, who can move and who can scramble, would be interior pressure. Now, Broderick Washington, you've been looking good in the preseason. Justin Matabike, you were looking good even before the preseason, even last year toward the tail end of last year. We saw why the Ravens love you so much. Now, of course, we got Calais Campbell, Pernell McPhee, uh, the old school guys, but that youth movement got to come through. The youth movement has to come through. And not only with just getting that interior pressure on Derek Carr, but just getting that interior pressure on runs too and just blowing them up because that's so important because you do not want the Raiders to get into a rhythm. You don't want Derek Carr uh, to get into a rhythm. Cause I know a lot of people are like, oh, Derek Carr's this, he's that, he's that. No, Derek Carr's a decent quarterback, and he can make some things happen. But you don't want to allow him to make those things happen at all, especially against your team. So Ravens defense – Patrick Queen, hey, Patrick Queen, you got a man in the middle. And Malik Harrison, this is going to be a big game for him. And I, I think that Malik Harrison, he, I think he could end up having a better game than Patrick Queen this week. Because with Malik Harrison, remember last year? He was a rookie last year, and of course Patrick Queen was too. But Malik Harrison, they, they, he was like this, their weapon X on defense. Because they only brought him out when them big boys were in town. When it was time to go against Derrick Henry, regular season and playoffs, oh, they, Malik, hey, come here, come here. Come through, hey, this, this, your, this your time. This is your time. So I expect the same with Josh Jacobs. I expect Malik Harrison to be heavily involved in the game plan on defense, heavily involved, because Josh, 
<laughs> Jacobs is a big boy, man. <laughs> he is a big boy. Uh, so Ravens, again, wrap up. If you can't bring Josh Jacobs down, wrap up until you get help so somebody else can help you bring him down. Because he's nice, man. I, I, I like Josh Jacobs, man. Uh, and this Raiders offense, and of course, th Darren Waller. Now, Darren Waller, we we get a, a great test, former Raven, by the way, but we get a great test of how these Ravens going to go against the top tight end straight from the jump. And then the following week, we got it with Travis Kelsey. So, yeah, this should be fun. But, no, it, it's nice to have that challenge from the beginning. So this defense can really, like, really, really, really be tested. Whoever's going to be on him, they, they, they got to be physical with him. You can't give him no easy release at the line, a scrimmage. And you, you got to play the ball good. That's something that Patrick Queen struggled with last year. So if he's going to be covering him, he just got to play pass defense a lot better. Chuck Clark, whenever he gets an opportunity to cover Darren Waller, Chuck Clark reminds me a lot of Anthony Averitt to where he'll be right there, but he won't make that play on the ball. So hopefully that pass defense, again, whoever's covering Waller, they'll be ready. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Because if you got to get ready during the game, then that, that can get ugly. So shout out to Darren Waller, though. I'm, uh, we as Ravens fans, we just super happy for him that he's doing well over there with the Raiders. End up getting him a new, nice little new contract and all that. I'm happy for him. Glad he's over there killing it. Because, again, Ravens originally drafted him as a receiver. They were like, what do we do with this guy, a receiver? We don't know what to do. Then they transferred him to a tight end. And it started to look like it was working out with him and the Ravens at tight end. But then he had, of course, the, the, all the problems. We don't need to get into that. But he overcame that. So that's great. Shout out to Darren Waller, man. And I hope he continues to have a bunch of success over there with the Raiders. Not this week. But, <laughs> but beyond this week, do your thing, man. Um, but, yeah, this, this should be a good one. Special teams, Justin Tucker, Sam Cook. I mean, what needs to be said about them? We just want Justin Tucker to continue doing what he's been doing. Sam Cook. Uh, hopefully we don't even see too much of Sam Cook. We, we, we want Sam Cook to have the night off. The only time we want to see Sam Cook is on the point after kicks. That's it. Point after touchdowns, and, and that's it. Him holding for Justin Tucker. As far as him punting, we don't want to see that because we want these Ravens to really run this score up, man. We really do. Uh, Raiders were one of Lamar Jackson's first games uh, as a starter, um, and I believe they were actually his – his second game as a starter. Uh, so he, um, this is historic. <laughs> this is very historic. Um, but yeah, this should be this should be a fun one, man. I'm excited to just hear all that the fans live at the stadium, them booing the Ravens, them of course cheering on the Raiders. I know it's gonna be a lot of Ravens flock out there in LA uh, to support the squad. So that should be fun to see. But I'm, I'm just glad overall that football is back, man. We, we officially, officially made it. We don't have to wait anymore. I know Sunday for, for Ravens and Raiders fans, it's going to be like, oh, man, this is dragging. But we got some great football games on Sunday, too, man. And so this, it's exciting times, man, because, again, we finally made it. It's official. It's week one. Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Y'all let me know how you think this game is going to go, how you think each team is going to do. And like I said, whether you're a Ravens fan or a Raiders fan, come through in the comments section and let us know. We out. Shout out to Ravens.